blog as well? Yes, uh, I do. I try to um, put as much content as, as I can, because, especially in Portuguese, because in Brazil we don't have a lot of material. Mm -hmm. You know, most of what we find on the internet is in English, so whenever I can put something in Portuguese, I, I think it's always good. And how can people follow you? Well, just can just find me on Facebook, you know, Bernardo Oliveira, uh, or Instagram or Twitter. And through my social media, you can just check out everything that I'm doing. Uh, you kids, you're all over the place. We have to. It is that age, isn't it? The age of social media. And it's now the time for Korea and Mexico in the gold medal match. Let's take a good look at the Korean team. And again, you're looking at Olympians right here. Kim Woo Jin teaming up with Koo Ban Chan and Lee Sung Yun. We talked about the women from Korea being ranked highly. Kim Woo Jin, number one in the world. Koo Ban Chan, number five in the world. And Lee Sung Yun, number three in the world. Not only that, they ranked really well in the qualifying round here, only split up by Brady Allison in second place. But, you know, besides that, they were first, third, and fourth. So Mexico has a battle on its hands, but Mexico had a good week, defeating Colombia 6-0, defeating the USA 5-4 in a shoot-off that was decided. It was 28-all in the shoot-off, but the nod went to Mexico, and then they knocked off a, a very tough team from Spain. You just watch what Spe uh, Spain is capable of doing. Mexico beat them 6-2. Juan Rene Serrano, surrounded by Older Zamora and Ernesto Boardman. We saw Ernesto in China two weeks ago in Shanghai, shooting in a medal match. He's 23 years old. His ranking jumped from 95th to 34th by getting to that bronze medal match. It does help in the world ranking. I'm really looking forward to seeing Mexico shoot because last year in Copenhagen, they couldn't get any Olympic quota and that was a huge upset for them. Now they, you can see that they're really working hard you know, to get to Antalya in their best form so that they can qualify for Rio. Earlier this week, they already got you know, a single quota and they, they just dominated. I think they, they took the first three places in the Olympic you know, qualifying tournament and uh, they will come strong against Korea. Totally different situations. Korea, they know they've got their guys in. They know they've got their team. This is practice for them. This is leading up to Rio. This is getting them honed and ready for that. Mexico, though, it's a different situation for them. It their is. backs are really kind of against the wall. It is, it is. But uh, I think it, it's not a reason for them to shoot not good scores. <laughs> How Korean <laughs> to start off with a 10 like that. Kim Woo Jin, like getting out of bed and brushing his teeth. Just get up to the line and shoot a 10. He does it as normal as breathing. Gu Ban Chan, oh. just a little low. Yeah, Gu's release didn't seem very good. Um, maybe it came too early, the shot. And here is Lee Sung Yun, who makes his home in Seoul, South Korea. And a world champion from 2013 on the beach in Belek. They have world champions, World Cup finalists, Olympians. Well, they've got endless world titles, their team. That really gives you a lot of confidence. Ernesto Boardman. Yes. Excellent shot by Ernesto. Off to a good start. Boardman is quite a new face in the Mexican team, but he is shooting really well and proving that, you know, he's there to stay. The man they call Lira, Older Zamora, 23 years of age. Nice start for him. One, Rene Serrano, 12 World Cup medals on his resume. Oh, he seemed to hold for quite a while. Yes, and he, he didn't shoot it relaxed. He, his release was tense. Well, maybe just the, the first couple of shots, you know, a little bit nervous, but it'll fade away. Here is Kim Woo Jin, who we will talk about after this set. That's a surprising score for him. He made a bold statement about the uh, upcoming Olympic Games, and we'll talk about that after this set is completed. I want to get your thoughts on this. <laughs> Kuban Chan trying to improve upon the eight. On his first shot, a little bit better effort. Got it in the uh, gold rings. Now, Lee shoots a little bit different compared to, the, to his teammates. He draws it really slowly, as you can see. And I think this allows him to, you know, have his bow arm really set up 
really firm in the place it should be so that he, when he anchors, he just thinks about the release. 54 points. Not insurmountable, but obviously a very, very high benchmark. Ernesto. Who missed out on a bronze medal in China two weeks ago. Boardman losing in the bronze medal match to Wei Chong Heng from Chinese Taipei. And the wind's catching up again. But strong, solid, solid shot, though. Yeah, Aldair Vira, as you said, is also a new face in the team. It's his first year in the senior squad, but he was the highest ranking Mexican here. So the set will go to Korea, regardless of this effort right now by Juan Rene Serrano. Mexico will come up three points short as Korea wins the set 54 51, and they will take a 2 0 lead in this match. So far, the first three team matches all been decided by scores of 6 0. They've been clean sweeps by Spain, by Korea and Mexico. Now Korea tried to do the same thing in the men's team gold medal match. Want to get back to Kim Woo Jin. He was quoted as saying, I will beat Im, meaning Im Dong Yun. I will beat Im's record at the Olympics in Rio. Thought that was a little bit, uh, I like the confidence, but I was a little bit surprised to hear him say that. Were you? Uh, well, to hear him say that, yeah, that can be quite a surprise. But if he does it, it'll be no surprise at all. Right. Yes. Uh, He's I, capable of doing that, yes. Yeah, I'm always amazed at how easily he can shoot abo a scores above 690, which is a great mark. You know, uh, the qualifying round here in Medellin, it had, you know, it had a little bit of wind in the second half, and still he shot 695. It's just two points below Brady's 697, which was the third highest score in history mm -hmm. in Shanghai and four points behind Im's score. Right. So, yeah, I think when you speak it out loud, it can help you that have more confidence. That was the surprising part, yeah. And I can see where, yeah, you want to set a goal for yourself and you're not afraid to say that and you feel confident in, enough in yourself to go out and say that publicly. But at the same time, I was a little bit surprised to hear it. Yes, and uh, we, we got to know that I I'm sure he's really hungry for these games because he it was quite an upset that he wasn't in the team for London. He was like world champion, world record holder, uh, won the World Cup and everything, and he wasn't in the Olympic team. So, To his credit, he's just kept working and made himself the great archer that he is. Number one in the world, Kim Woo Jin. We'll see him momentarily, but first Ernesto Bordman flying high, a little too high for his liking. Oder Zamora. Averaging nine points per arrow. And gets that nine. Hits his average. Now a good look at Juan Rene Serrano. Won a team gold medal here in Medellin, the first year we had a stage here in Colombia, back in 2013. Stabs that eight ring. Let's see how Korea performs in the wind. It's also blowing strong for them. Kim Woo Jin in a very typical Korean form. The wind does not seem to affect him very much, and the wind has picked up. It's a little bit past noon here in Medellin, and it is high noon. The sun straight above us as Kuban Chan finds the line. Just does catch that line for a 10. Very slow, very deliberate. Very calm and confident. And what a great release. Stood there, followed through. Yes, yeah, everything very clean, very smooth. That's how it should be. So a commanding lead for Korea here in the second set. They're up by five. Boardman. The bullet that connects with the nine line. Yeah. 
Lira just, just out left. So it's left to one, Rene Serrano. And one, Rene cannot come up with an answer either. Yeah, I think the, the coach is telling them to aim off, but maybe it's not really necessary. Mr. Kim connects. Yeah, when you see Kim Woo Jin shooting fast like this, you can know it's a 10 for sure. Like, uh, he's a guy that when he's up in the pressure a little bit, he takes a little bit longer. But when he's relaxed and he shoots fast like that, then he's just doing his game and uh, you'd better step out of the way. Korea piling it on right now. Kuban Chan with another 10. I think they're going to shoot their fourth 59 in this competition. Lee Sung Yoon can give them 59 points. Lee lets it oh. fly instead, though, just outside. But enough to win. And the two set points go to Korea, and Korea well on its way to a sweep right now, leading four to nothing here in the men's team gold medal match. I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors. Hyundai, of course, proud sponsor of World Archery. New thinking, new possibilities, drive Hyundai. Hats off to Sport Toto. One goal, let the sport grow. Fila, the official uniform partner of World Archery. Our thanks to Fila for their great support. And Longines, which awards the prize for precision. With Longines, elegance is an attitude. Hoyt, of course, the official bow partner, and Easton, the official arrow partner of World Archery. Getting back to Longines, we saw them uh, present the uh, prize for precision yesterday to Sarah Lopez, who was amazing with three gold medals here in her native land on her home soil yesterday. Won the women's team gold medal, won the mixed team gold medal, and then in a match I think people will remember for a long time to come, an outstanding match with Crystal Gobb, and then went right down to the shoot-off. Sarah was able to come away with a shot just a little bit closer to the center. Yes, it's so good when archers can give their home crowd such a, you know, such an excitement, such a spectacle. Uh, this is great for our sport, you know, to bring the people to, you know, attract the attention and make people that don't know archery, you know, want to look there and say, hey, what's going on? Like, why is everyone so, so excited? And it, it's just amazing. You watched that match yesterday. If you go back and watch that on uh, worldarchery.org, you'll see what we're talking about in case you did not get a chance to catch it live. It was, uh, they stood toe-to-toe, -to -toe, Gavin and Lopez. Crystal had a chance to win it on the final shot. And shot low, didn't put the match away. It went to the shoot-off, and Sarah was able to come up with a 10 that was just a little bit better. Still, Sarah Lopez is the name to beat in the compound women, isn't she? She shot uh, in qualifying as high as any men's score in qualifying. And I believe she had 62 tens during the week. I'll have to look up that number just to see. But it would be interesting to see how, in a matchup against one of the best male archers, would be nice to see how the best female compound archer would fare. I think she would more than hold her own. I really do. I'd like to see that. And now we see, I think the wind switched the direction. Unfortunately, Samora shot a five to the left. And that's so tricky. We're seeing really tough conditions here today. And we're also starting to see the sun be a factor as well as it hits that target face. Look, some, half the target's in the shade, half of it is yes. in the bright sunlight. Yes, yes. It, it might seem something like not so important, but when you're aiming, it can make a huge difference. It can make you feel a little bit uncomfortable, and that does affect the shot. I know when I was talking with Steve Anderson of the United oh, States yes. yesterday, another brilliant <laughs> shot back to back tens by Korea as they seem intent on a sweep right here. But talking with Steve Anderson, he was talking about how it's, it's really almost better when you've got an overcast day because then it's flat lighting. It's just perfect, yes. Doesn't yeah. seem to be affecting Korea, though, does it? Yeah, they, they don't really <laughs> matter. Uh, they don't really care about it. Sunlight, wind. Yeah, another, another huge factor is uh, when, uh, for example, a cloud comes, you know, before the sun, mm -hmm. and then there's this momentary shade. It, it also can change the sight a lot. One Rene. 
they switched up the lineup a little bit there to try to, I think, get things jump-started. Yeah. Try to find something to get them going. Mm -hmm. But he, he's not pleased with his shot and with his performance. Zamora. Uh, I, I think Mexico had only one ten in, in the entire match. That's, that's so bad. And it came on their first shot of the match. The very first shot was a 10 by Ernesto Borgman. Yeah, this final really doesn't reflect what the Mexicans were shooting because, for example, they beat the United States. You know, they're exactly the same lineup of Lon London 2012 in a shootoff, shooting really strong scores. I think now they just got to keep their head up and keep confident for Antalya. And that was a shoot-off that was decided by the score of 28-all. It's just that they had one arrow that was a little bit closer, and that was the t determining factor. Yes, it was an axe. Yes. The Koreans are going to start breaking some knocks over there. <laughs> <laughs> so this should do it right here in workmanlike fashion, Korea. Puts it in the hands, the very capable hands, of Lee Sung Yun. Just bringing home. And he closes the deal. And Not his strongest enough. shot of the day, but it's more than enough. In more this case, enough. eight is enough. And it is another straight set victory for Korea. All of the medal matches this morning, all four of them decided by the score of six to nothing. Straight set victories for each of the victors. And this time it is the men from Korea. And we'll see more of the Koreans coming up later on this afternoon. But as you look at the scorecard for Korea, a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine of their shots in the 10 ring. Only one in the 10 ring for Mexico. In this wind, that's really impressive. It's Amazing to see how can they how can they remain so confident and so strong in the wind. Well, they are the powerhouse of the sport. After all, we can expect nothing less than that. I'm sure everybody trains in the wind. Everybody has to prepare for all types of conditions, whether it's wind or it's rain. But obviously, the Koreans. Uh, and again, it goes back to what we said so many, many times during the course of our broadcast this morning. The mental aspect of that. How do you handle that? And obviously the Koreans have found a way to not only train themselves physically, but train themselves mentally to handle almost any condition they can, that they confront.